I think that um, the big thing here, uh, you know, there's been a lot of, oh, what, what type of extra should I do? I think you should probably just, you know, do what you can, do what you're going to do. Um, probably good to do both. Like I do a lot of Tabatas. And so I, I, I go between my all outs and also like, you know, I'm in, I'm in like a zone three, sometimes a zone two when I'm sort of tapering it down and like before I'm about to go back all out again. And I do that 10 or 15 minutes a day, five days a week. Um, and then I, I also like to do resistance training and that's another, you know, muscle mass and maintaining muscle mass. So important. And, you know, building up that muscle reserve earlier in life, because, you know, you got to build it up, you got to build it up. And once you start to reach a certain age, it becomes very hard to gain muscle mass, although you can still gain strength. Um, and so, you, you, you know, you, you have a harder time gaining that mass, but you're losing it. And so it's kind of like the more you start with the losses aren't quite as big. Right. So I think resistance training is very important for that as well. All those things are important. And, um, I think that you, you have to find something that you can incorporate into your, your daily routine and that you will, you will do. And, you know, you want your heart rate to get up. You want to sweat, you want to be tired. Like you want, like you want to feel tired afterwards. And I think exercise, um, whatever, whatever way you can do it, where you are at least getting your heart rate up and you are flush in the face and you are like, you know, when you're working out, you don't, you can't talk right to some degree. I think that's good. And, um, there's been studies that have looked at, you know, I think exercise can forgive a lot of sins. And I'll say this, you know, I, during, um, when I was a young, you know, a new mother, my, my, my son was a newborn and all the way up and through the first year, I mean, there was, there was just so much disruption to my sleep that, and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, like we all know how important sleep is for health, for brain function, for blood pressure, everything. Right. But when you are a young, I can only speak as a mother. Like I, I can't speak for being a father, but I think I mean, their the father's sleep is also disrupted somewhat too. Mothers though have to they're breastfeeding. Um, there's no there's you have to feed your baby. There's nothing you can do. And in a way, if you think about all the detrimental effects, it can be very discouraging. You're like, I am, I'm doing terrible things to myself, and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, I um I I was wearing a, a continuous glucose monitor at the time, and my blood glucose, my fasting blood glucose levels were just through the roof. And it was crazy. You know, I was eating the same diet and, and it wasn't until I got back into my, I was doing a lot of spin classes back then. And, um, it wasn't until I got like on, on the Peloton or the exercise bike doing high intensity interval training that all of a sudden it normalized my, my blood glucose levels, even with the interrupted sleep. And then I've went into the literature and found, you know, studies showing high intensity interval training can basically ameliorate the negative effects of sleep deprivation on blood blood glucose um, regulation. And, you know, so clearly scientific evidence of it. I had anecdotal evidence as well. Um, but there's also was a pretty recent study looking at sleep and all cause mortality. There's lots of those out there. You'll find, of course, people with slow, you know, um, disrupted sleep, shorter, you know, much, much shorter sleep durations have a higher all cause mortality. However, this, this recent study also looked at physical activity and it was interesting because sleep, you know, quality and quantity again was associated. So lower quantity was associated with higher all cause mortality, but only in people that were not physically active. In other words, physical activity forgave the sleep disruption, the, the poor sleep. Uh, I think that if there's a message here, it is that the most important thing that you can do in your life is to sweat and get physically active. Like there's nothing that is going to be better for you. No, no aging drug, nothing, nothing's going to be better than, than what exercise can do at the moment. Um, and I think that's, that is, um, is the, is the main message that like, you just need to be like, if you care about aging, everything from skin is skin aging. Like there was a study showing that people that are physically active, are 20 to 50% less likely to have collagen breakdown. And I mean, it was just amazing. Everything, brain health, cardiovascular health, you know, it's, it's just, it, it's, it's the most powerful, I would say longevity drug you're going to get in my opinion.